Hello, John here again with part two of designing and developing a simple graphi uh, gravity physics engine use it, uh, in assembly. So as, you, as I showed you in part one we was just building a very simple engine that worked out the the height an object would be under the gravity conditions and the vertical velocity conditions. What we're going to do now is we're going to add the cutoff points for both upward velocity and downward velocity. Now I've commented the the the, the the routine that we created in the previous uh, tutorial. So just to recap, we've got some data points, you know, x velocity, y velocity, x position, y position, and the constant for gravity. We reset the x, y positions and the x, y velocities to the start values. And then we basically loop round the calculator until the object has hit vertical position zero or in this case the floor. So we update the x position if we was uh, using the x position with the x velocity we, sub we subtract the gravity constant from the y velocity and then add that to the y um, position that will either increase the y position or decrease it and we loop root through that and then once it's done we um, reset it back. So what we're going to do now is we're going to put a velocity ceiling and velocity floor for both up and down and the reason for this is because you don't want it you know you don't want it constantly adding gravity to the velocity going negative because it just gets beyond um, all uh, possibilities and you don't want the vo when when we do add the thrust value to this we don't want the vertical velocity be so much that it doesn't register on the screen so it, that's the, that's the whole point of this it's, it's it, we're adding a terminal velocity barrier uh, in both directions both vert, uh, positively and negatively now the way we would do this is we would once when we uh, test for the floor, yeah, um, we we need to be able to no, not when we test for the floor. When we sub when we uh, work out the new velocity value, we need to test the velocity value that we've come up with, whether it breaks the the rules that we have decided to put in place. So the the, the best thing to do is, it, is we put those that's this um, logic in this section here where we're working out the new y velocity so for example we need to test both the positive and the negative values of y y velocity because as i've shown you in the previous uh, tutorial once because we're using two co two complement to work all this uh, maths out that the positive values are 0 to 127 and the negative values are FF down to uh, what 255 down to 128. So the first thing we can do is we can check whether it's we're still in positive velocity or negative velocity. So so we can we can say branch if plus and we'll try to send it to check positive velocity. So we're going to send that off to the positive velocity and basically do the check there. So that means because we're branching away for positive what we're left with is the negative or in other words the downward velocity. So what we can do is we can now check the accumulator because that is what's got the new velocity value in and say that we don't want it to go so two complements oh, let's calculator so here we go so here's the calculator 
and we're in decimal mode and we don't want it to say go more than negative uh, oops let's clear this more than negative 60 yeah so that's going to be C4 so we need to com we need to compare it to um, hex C4 so here hash dollar C4 so that's saying we're comparing it with the equivalent of negative uh, 60 and if it's greater than that then we do so if it's greater than that then we're, we're we are fine because it's greater than C4 but if it's less than which is BCC we, we want to not update the velocity so we're going to branch away and not update the velocity so the other thing is then to is to jump to update velocity so this is going to be update velocity yeah so we jump to here and the reason why I put a jump in here is because here we're now going to velocity we're going to put all the checks for the positive velocity so in this particular we're going to do the same thing ash dollar but we're going to check for the same value but the positive so if I clear this, so go back one so 60, so that's going to be hex 3c so we're saying that we're not 3c? yeah 3c, what am I putting 3e for? so anything bigger than that which is BCS we don't want it to update so don't update velocity but if it is smaller than that which is what we want we want it to update the velocity which is here so we need to identify where don't update velocity well that's here because we want it to skip the store so don't update velocity is there and so if we just run through this again so we uh, we work out the new vertical velocity if it's a positive number we jump to here and then we compare it with 60 and if it's greater than 60 we don't want to update it but if it's less than 60 we update the, ver the y velocity if it's a negative number it goes straight through here so we compare it with minus 60 in two complement if it's less than mine if it's less than c4 then we don't want to update the velocity because that's effectively bigger than minus 60 but if it's greater than c4 which means it's less than minus 60 we jump to update velocity because we want to update uh, update the velocity and this allows us now to have a top and bottom limit of the vertical velocity so we would never go in one cycle would never go more than minus 60 down or more than 60 up yeah and this is just to control it now I've just done minus 60 in reality for gaming you would you would probably make this 30 if that so you know yeah so you would never get above that particular value so, with the, the demo I've got, um, I don't think we'd ever go uh, greater than 60 or less than 60. So, you know, let's, let's put in some more um, realistic values. So, we'll say 3C C equals plus 60. So we, so, we can remember that one. And... C4 
is equal to minus 60. So let's put in, so let's say that we can't go above or below 15. So right, so let's clear that and we'll put 15. So that's F and minus 15 is F1. So F1, 0, F. So save that. So that means now that um, we can't go, we can't descend faster than 15 and we can't ascend faster than 15. So if we run the debugger now, so if we run the debugger, here we go, we'll put a couple of uh, watches in because we want to still work. So this 5 is still vertical velocity and we'll add the Y position which is 6. So, so if we run through this and we're just going to see if we break the rules. So it subtracts gravity, still positive, still works out, yes, so, so it didn't update, so I've got me test the wrong way around, let's stop that, so, so this is BCS and BCC, so let's do that again, debugger. So I'll put the watch in again, so it's uh, 5, 6, so we're initialising it and so we're starting with the velocity, so which is 18, so we're starting off with, uh, ooh, y velocity is 18, yeah. Subtract the gravity. So we're checking if it's a positive number, which it is. Our velocity is a pos positive number. Is it bigger than OF? No. Oh, let's see. Oh, it is. Yeah, so it was right the right first time around. Me, stupid. I've made the fingers, figures too small, haven't I? Because first thing, the, the vertical velocity is, we've automatically made it greater than 15. So, okay, we'll put that back to 3C. 3C, because it's the downward velocity that's more important. Right, let's try that again. So... Five, six. All right, cycle through it. So, vertical velocity is eighteen. We're going to subtract gravity. Yep, stores it in. So it makes it thirteen. So we're coming. The vertical velocity is coming down. So it should go down a bit further. O E. Vertical velocity is now Yeah, we're still below that. We're still in positive territory. Oh four. Now this is where it goes negative. There we are. So we're now in negative velocity, so we should start going the other way. So compare with F1, which is which is fine, so it updates the velocity because it's still okay. Then we do it again and now we're F8 so we should still update so it's F5 so yeah we're still okay so it updates so subtract velocity so F5 minus the gravity is F0 and that's why it's no longer updating the velocity But there's a problem. Don't know if you've seen it. It's still on F5. Now we want it to be F1. So best thing to do is when we do don't update the velocity. Which is here. 
you know, because if it's F1 and then we don't update the velocity, so what we want to do is we want to set the no, I think that's fine. You know, the fact that the new value is less is is less than so it it's only ever going to be as in this case far uh, four out. So if we, we'll do it again. So I'll run through it again quickly. So we'll add five. And we'll add six. Move that up a bit. So you can see the watch. So I'm going to step through this. So here we go. So we initialize it. And now we're doing the gravity takeaway. Store velocity. There we go, 13. Then it's going to do it again. And at this time it's OE. So we're still OK. 09. Still OK. 04. Still OK. This time it's FF, so we should go down the negative route, which we are. Update velocity, yep. Yeah. Then the next time negative is now FA, yep. Yeah. And then the next time is F5, so this is the last time we'll update the velocity, so the next time we'll always skip it. Don't update the velocity, which it does, it skips it. So this allows us now in this small engine to check and I'll put some comments in this before we finish to check that the the maximum velocity upwards in this case is still plus 60 but the maximum velocity downwards is in this case minus 15 but it's up to you guys when you're doing this whether you want to change with those numbers or not. So that's applying a terminal velocity both positively and negatively. In the next video we'll add the code that allows us to alter the vertical velocity when thrust has been applied. And so until that video, ta bye for now, see you later, bye!